Hey everyone! So tomorrow is a pretty big day for me. It marks my one year anniversary for this YouTube channel. I can't believe it's already been a year. It feels like it's gone by so fast. I'm so happy to have all of you here. I couldn't do this without you, so thank you so much for making this whole channel possible. Since my first DIY tutorial that was ever posted was Halloween themed, I thought that I would celebrate this by doing the rest of the month with Halloween themed videos. And not only that, I'm going to be doing Halloween week. For the whole week right before Halloween, Monday through Friday, I will be posting short Halloween videos to help completely get you into the Halloween spirit. I'm super excited and I hope you guys enjoy the videos that I come up with. Anyway, back to this week's video. The very first DIY video I made was a working wind-up key. And since then I've had a few people that had problems with the key being too heavy so it would droop a little bit whenever they would put it on. So I wanted to put together a wind-up key 2.0 kind of updated video showing a few different types of keys you can make that would hopefully be lighter than what I had initially showed you guys so that they don't droop. And then if all else fails, I'll be showing you a foolproof way to make it stick straight out for sure. So let's get started. Before we get started, I wanted to show you guys a few different types of wind-up toys that I've found and which ones, in my opinion, work best for this project. In my search for these wind-up toys, I've typically found three different types of toys. There are ones that bounce, like the chattering teeth from last year, or this little monster. Ones that perform an action like dancing, like the skeleton, or shimmying to the side, like the one that I used last year. And lastly, you can find ones on wheeled toys, like cars, or in my case, I found this giant ant. Don't even waste your money buying the bouncing, chattering type of wind-up toy. As far as I've seen, each one that I've tried to use just doesn't work. Whenever I take them apart, they have a spring on the inside of the toy that helps cause resistance in the wind-up mechanism. So when you take it apart, the spring just falls out, and then when you wind up the key and let it go, it just spins back super quick. Totally not what you're looking for for this project. The other two types, however, work perfectly. The little skeleton dude looks kind of complicated and it was a little tricky to get apart, but hopefully you guys can find a toy that doesn't have so many tiny parts on it. The one that I used last year was pretty perfect. It was super easy to take apart and it was pretty much ready to go once I pulled the mechanism out. But for this one, I took it apart completely and there were two small rods sticking out from either side of the mechanism that spin around and twirl little round discs. These are what would make him move when you wound him up. And all I had to do was pop the discs off and cut and sand the metal rods down. If they're not sticking out too bad, then you can get away with just leaving them as is. The last one, the wheeled type, is pretty much the same as the last one, but the metal rods are normally longer and they have wheels on them. With these ones I think that you would have no choice but to snip and sand the metal rods down since they stick out so much. In the first video I made I suggested pulling the rod out completely, but just to be safe I would leave them in and just cut and sand the metal down if you need to just to make sure that everything on the inside stays together. That metal rod might be what's keeping some of the gears in place, so taking it out might mess it up. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys find wind-up toys that will work. So now I'll show you how to make a few different types of keys. For the first one, I'll show you how to make one with a balsa wood shaft. You'll need a balsa wood rod. If you can find balsa dowel, that's perfect. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any, so I just got one of these normal square rods. If these are the only kinds that you can find, and you do want it round, you could just sand the edges. Foam core board, a printed key pattern, I'll be linking to that down below. Or if you want, you can just design one yourself. The wind-up key mechanism, paint, an X-Acto knife, a hot glue gun, sandpaper, and a drill. Cut the balsa wood down to size. Balsa wood is so light and soft that you can totally just use a blade to cut it most of the way and snap it off. Then sand that side smooth. The longer you make it, the heavier the end result will be. Initially I made it long, then I went back and I cut it down to about 4 inches. 
drill a hole into one side. Use a drill bit that's about as big as the rod from the wind-up mechanism. You can see here that I snapped off the little plastic bit that helps you twist the key around, so I need to make the hole as large as the rod. If you can't remove the plastic bit, or you don't want to, you need to drill a hole that's as big as the plastic. Use the template I provided to trace the key design onto the foam core board and cut it out. Be sure to use a sharp blade, because if you don't, the foam on the inside will catch and ball up, making your edges look horrible. Cut the rectangle at the bottom to match the size of the wood that you're using. Use hot glue to attach the key onto the wood. And then paint! Use craft paint to paint this key. However tempting it may be, do not use spray paint. The solvents in the spray paint will react with the foam in the foam core board and it will dissolve. I did a base coat of cream and then I painted it gold. Set it aside to dry. For this other version, I'll show you how to make it with foam. You'll need a foam backer rod. You can find this in the weatherproofing section of most hardware stores. It's sold in a coil, usually about a few feet long. There's a few different sizes and I went with the smallest. Wire, foam core board, a printed key pattern, a wind-up key mechanism, paint, an X-Acto knife, hot glue gun, wire cutters, and scissors. Use a pair of scissors to cut the foam to size. If you remove the plastic bit off of the wind-up mechanism, you can just poke it into one side. But if you didn't, like me, you can use a small pair of scissors to kind of cut and stab a hole that's big enough to fit the plastic bit and rod. Cut a length of wire that's as long as the foam rod, minus how long the wind-up mechanism rod is, Carefully push that into the foam, trying to keep it towards the middle, and this will help keep the foam straight without adding much weight. Cut a key from the foam core using the printed pattern and a sharp blade. I used the smaller version for this key. Cut the rectangle at the bottom to the size of the foam rod. Slip the key onto the foam and apply hot glue around the seams. Make sure you don't touch the metal of the glue gun to the foam or it will melt. Now just paint it and set it aside to dry. Normally, you'll just attach this to a normal, thick, stretchy belt, but if you can't find one, I'll show you some examples of what you can do instead. For this first one, you'll need some thick elastic cut to fit your waist, Velcro, a needle and thread, and optionally, you can use some ornamental hook and eye closures. Sew one side of the Velcro onto the ends of the belt. Take the other piece of Velcro and sew it to the other end of the belt on the inside. So when you wrap it around yourself, the Velcro pieces can touch and secure the belt. If this is going to go under your costume, then you can stop here. But if you want to dress it up a little bit, then you could totally add some pretty ornamental hook and eye closures to make it look nice when you close the belt. To figure out the placement, Velcro the belt together and put the hook and eye pieces onto the belt and mark where they are. And then just sew them in place. For the other type of belt, you'll need thick elastic cut to fit your waist, a bra fix kit for thicker straps, a needle and thread, and optional again, ornamental hook and eye closures. In the bra fix kit, you'll have a big piece that has a little bit of elastic and the loops, and then you'll have the smaller piece that has the hook bits. Take the bigger piece and line up the elastic of that with the elastic that you've cut and sew them together. Then take the smaller piece that has the hooks and sew it onto the other side of the elastic on the inside with the hook bits opening towards the inside of the belt so that when you wrap it around yourself, the hook bits will hook on to the loops and secure it. Again, if you want to make it pretty, you can add some ornamental hook and eye closures, but I opted to skip that this time. Attaching the key to the belt is the same way for either type of key. There's only one difference, and I'll explain that when I get to it. Take your belt, fold it in half, and mark. Fold it in half again, lengthwise, and mark that to find center. If you snapped off the plastic end of the wind-up mechanism, then you can just push the metal rod through. This is ideal because then none of the elastic is damaged. If you did keep the plastic bit on, then you can try to make a hole with an awl or something that's big enough to shove the plastic bit through, but you might have to end up cutting it to make a hole that's big enough. 
Once that's through, add a little dot of hot glue at the bottom of the wind-up mechanism, avoiding any of the moving bits, and attach it to the belt. Repeat for the top. Then it's just a matter of squeezing some hot glue into the shaft of the key and sticking it onto the metal rod of the wind-up mechanism. Here's where it's different for the foam key. If you squeeze the hot glue directly into the foam, it would just melt. So instead, apply the hot glue onto the metal rod of the wind-up mechanism and then push it into the foam. Then take some stretchy fabric, in my case I used extra bits of the elastic, and sew it to cover the wind-up mechanism. And then you're done! Hopefully the lighter keys don't droop, but if they do, here's how you can fix it. You'll need a droopy wind-up key, two pieces of cardboard, about 4 by 8 inches, with the corrugation running up and down in one and side to side in the other hot glue, and paint. Sketch out a more interesting shape. You could just stick with the rectangle, but it's a little boring in my opinion, so I tapered the ends like so. You could just do an oval or something like that too. Cut out the shape and use that as a template for the other piece. These are going to end up being glued together, so try to make them as similar as possible. Also, you want to make sure the corrugation is running perpendicular to each other because that will add strength when they're glued together. Take the piece that has corrugation running up and down, find the midpoint, and cut a slit going from the middle to the bottom. Then you can slide this onto the wind-up key, between the outside of the belt and the big key. It was a little bit of a tight fit, but I eventually got it on. I also had to push down the cardboard that's around where the key spins so that it could spin because before that, the cardboard was pushing against it and holding it in place. So you might need to do the same. Now you'll need to cut a little window out of the other piece of cardboard for the wind-up mechanism to stick through. Use your ruler and measure from the edges of the mechanism to the edges of the cardboard piece that you slipped on, and then transfer the measurements onto the second piece of cardboard. Then cut out the rectangle. Dry fit the piece and mark where the belt is. Apply hot glue to the cardboard avoiding where the belt will be, and then attach it to the first piece of cardboard. Apply hot glue to the other side and stick together. Trim off any cardboard that doesn't match up perfectly. From here, you can paint it and be done, or you can add a little bit of decoration to pretty it up. I sketched out some hearts and swirls, and then I used my hot glue gun to draw over it, making a 3D design. I let that cool, and then I painted it. I ended up just painting everything gold because I didn't have more of this copper paint that I used for the key initially. Once that's dry, try it out. There is no way that this will droop now. The only downside is that you can't really hide the belt anymore, but if you use the belt that matched your costume, then it might not matter anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. Here's to many more years of DIY videos, hopefully. If you did like this video, then please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. I post speed painting videos every Tuesday and DIY videos every Thursday. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Pinterest, and I'll leave the information to those down below. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next week.